In north-central Nigeria, villagers have packed their belongings and flee their homes in Bakas local government area in Plateau State after a series of attacks by armed groups. While 16 people were killed in the village in Mushu, gunmen targeted a community near Bakas local government area early Monday, killing at least eight individuals. The attacks which started in the Bakas area spilled into neighboring Bark in Ladi, where 30 people were found dead. There are, however, unconfirmed reports that the death toll in the state is well over 100. According to Mon uh, Monday, Kasa, head of the local government in Bacchus, the bandits launched a well-coordinated attack in not fewer than 20 different communities. To discuss this, we are joined by a security expert, Ambassador Melvin Eje. He is the Executive Director, Global Peace and Life Rescue Initiative. Thank you so much for your time. Very much. Thank you for having me. Now, let's talk about these attacks, which have left fear in the hearts of residents. How can uh, the country ensure that this kind of incident is forestalled from happening again? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this afternoon, I want to specifically condole the people of uh, Bokos local government Government and people of Plateau State and Nigeria as a whole for this wanton destruction of life and property. This is very sad and very, very barbaric, inhuman for human beings to kill human beings in this manner. What happened in Plateau State is an act likened to an act of animal, not human beings. So I think we need a deliberate action from the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, our military, who are already doing so much to contain this crisis and the entire communities. Our people must come together to get this issue resolved because we can't leave it for the security alone because the security men are not magician. They won't do otherwise and they cannot do an impossibility. Like I have always maintained, we just wake up and blame security agencies for not acting. As a matter of fact, if not for the action of Operation Safe Heaven, the military outfit in Plateau State, no village would have been standing in Mangu, Bukos, and Barikinadi. So I think the country needs to do more as a country. But good enough, the president has taken very proactive steps in the budget of next year to address the issue of insecurity. So I think it will get better very soon. Mm. I mean, this is really, really tragic. I mean, if I'm to cast my mind back a bit, I remember, you know, I, I did my uh, National Youth Service Corps in Plateau State, and at a time when uh, I also witnessed one of these similar uh, incidents, the crisis, I ran, you know, a couple of times by myself. But it looks like over the years, uh, this, will I call it, insurgents, this terrorists, this perpetrators, uh, keep evolving and keep getting creative. I mean, from the report we have here, it was pretty well coordinated uh, in no fewer than, you know, 20 different, you know, communities almost simultaneously. So what does this tell about the security apparatus set up to actually protect lives and property in Plateau State? Are they up to the task or are they overwhelmed? I do not think they are overwhelmed. They are only understaffed. They are doing their best. The GOC and his team are doing so much to keep Plateau safe, and I think they are doing their very best. But what we must consider is the number of security men we have in that in, in, in Plateau State, especially Operation Safe Heaven. They are the only visible security agency I'm seeing. I've seen on ground. They are the only ones I've seen who are up and doing. Yes, we must not uh, overlook the the action of other security agencies, but they should box stop on the table of the Operation Safe Heaven, the military outfit, because they are the only ones that have been so proactive. I'm in fairness to all the security agencies, but these are people that have, doing, that have done so much, that people that are doing so much. They are not overwhelmed per se, but I think they are overstaffed. They need to get more reinforcement, because the terrain is so massive, the local government, the, 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 the local government is so massive. There are three local governments, they are spanned over a very large set of lands, so you don't expect less than 2,000 people to, to police the entire, the entire location. So what I'm asking for the military high command is that they must redeploy re more men to Plateau State. They have done their best, if not for the action, like I mentioned earlier, Plateau State entirely would have been on fire because these attackers came with a very high margin of attack. They have inter inter international dimension. It is a well-planned attack to annihilate the people of Bokos, Mangu, and Barikilani local government of Plateau State. The security agencies, especially Operation Safe Heaven, are doing their very best, mm. but they can't be everywhere. Mm. The terrain is hilly. The, the, the environment is bumpy. So before you could assess at the attack locations, it will take time. The response time can be fast because of the terrain. You can't go there with a vehicle. You need motorcycle to be able to assess these locations. 
All right. Uh, oops. Can you hear me? Okay. I, I'm still going to stay with you on this particular pattern, uh, patterns of attacks, because like I said earlier, I've witnessed uh, quite a few during my service years there. Um, it seems to happen or uh, follow a particular pattern. There are times of the year, mostly towards the end of the year, the beginning of the year, you see some of these flash attacks, and they come really, really intense. And just like you said, it took, uh, and I don't want to use the word unusual, because, I, I mean, we've seen such patterns also. It seems really well coordinated. They seem well funded, and they seem even trained. That's the perpetrators. Now, my question yeah. is this. What can be done to attack the root cause or to address the root cause? Because I also understand that some of these attacks have morphed into uh, sort of religious stroke tribal. You know, many of them have even gone beyond the political undertone that it used to be. So what can be done to attack or to address the root cause? I think I think what can be done, I think what can be done require the concerted effort of all. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. I think what can be done requires concerted effort of all. We must come together as a people. We must show religious and ethnic uh, uh, differences and come together to a drawing table and, and actually map out how best we can live together. As a matter of fact, some of the strategies cannot be disclosed here because they are very deep and it's not, it may not be good for the general public. But the current GOC is doing so much. The current governor is actually very committed. One of the reasons why we have this crisis up to now was because, in fairness to this governor, he has taken practical steps to end this crisis than the former government. I have no hatred for the former government. I have no business, nothing against him. But this governor has taken more active steps in ending this crisis. So this is a crisis that spanned over several years. One person cannot end it. We must come together, sit together, religious leaders, community leaders, CSOs must come together to see that this crisis is ended. Like I said earlier, we cannot discuss some of the modalities on television. Mm. Let me tell you what happened before now. It was a military operation in Plateau State alone, Operation Save Heaven, that was doing everything to end this crisis, including kinetic and non-kinetic approach. It's until the coming of this governor that decided getting some level of assistance from the government. Now, you cannot leave this operation for the military alone. You cannot leave it for police alone. You cannot leave for DSS alone. The government needs to be deliberate about it. The government needs to come in, to step in, to begin to provide modalities, to begin to provide logistics. Like I said earlier, these terrains, you cannot assess them with vehicles. How many motorcycles were bought in the last administration? You need power bikes, you need motorcycles that these security agencies can mount to be able to chase down these criminals. There is a criminal aspect of it, there is a regional aspect of it, there is an ethnic aspect of it, there is an international dimension to this crisis. So all of these fronts need to be checked and modalities put together. But I maintain, not all of the solutions can be discussed in the public. However, things are being done by the current governor and the current GOC General, Abu Salam, the General Abakar, to end this crisis on the platform. And I mm -hmm. think we'll get results very, very soon. What we have, what we have this, this, these days is just a barbaric criminal attack against the poor Plateau State. It also has some political consideration. I will, without, I will say this without fear or favor or contradiction. It has some political coloration because a particular tribe mm. were mostly targeted for killing. A particular tribe, that's the governor's tribe, was particularly targeted for this killing. Who is responsible for this thing? And what, are this, what is the motive? I mean, I, I would have loved if you, you know, have some sort of evidence to actually back that up. But I, I would also want to stay on the non-offensive you know, approach to addressing this issue. Because I remember, you know, my stay there, I met a 19-year-old who was, uh, when the crisis started, he said, he picked up an ox and he told me, he said that he's not going to run again. The reason is because he has lost friends and family. And for that reason, this is an opportunity for him to fight back and, of course, uh, uh, sort of get justice. So I would also want to ask, what is being done by the government and even community leaders to ensure people also heal from attacks of the past so that they don't eventually become uh, monsters, uh, you know, made as a result of what is going on? Very important. This, this is one aspect that you touched that gladdened my heart so much. And this is one of the reasons why the crisis have refused to go, because there is no forgiveness among the people. Nobody is doing anything deliberately 
to the traumatized, the already traumatized people by this crisis. Let me give you a scenario. I just left Mango not, not, not long ago. I saw a video. I saw a video of, a, of some women who were killed, who had baby behind them. These people were killed in their cold blood with their baby still crying. Unfortunately, I can't send it on air because it's too gory. I have such video still in my, in, in my phone, but I can't send it because it's gory. These children were crying behind their mother and their mother were shot to death. Now, how can these children forgive whoever they suspect that killed the student, that killed their mother? So I think there's a deliberate attempt to continue to traumatize black to people. There's a deliberate attempt to ensure that this crisis never finished. What sort of wickedness is that, that you are going to kill a, a mother in the presence of his child? He will not forgive you. So I think NGOs and government need to come together. We need to sit down together and begin to carry out programs that will preach forgiveness, that will begin to de-traumatize people that are already traumatized. Another incident, for a breadwinner of a family that is killed, who pays the wife fee for his child? Who take the, take the child for that? Every time that child thinks of the fact that he or she cannot live properly, he, he's planning to, he will plan to take revenge. That is a cycle of violence we're going to have on the platform. Previously, this government of President Ahmed Bola Tinibu and Caleb Mutfan just came on board. They are less than one year. So there is nothing really they can do now. In fact, they have not, this is the first time that they are going to present over their budget. In fact, the federal government have not been signed, except for the state government. So there is nothing really they can still do. The previous government, I'm sorry, did not do much to end this crisis. Otherwise, it's not a rocket science. This crisis can be solved, it can finish, and it can be tackled. Mm. But it needs a deliberate effort of the government. Government must spend money, government must mobilize CSU, government must mobilize experts to ensure that people go to community and begin to speak to communities about forgiveness. The major issue is lack of forgiveness. Mm. That is why we're having this crisis. All right, uh, thank you so much for your time. And of course, we appreciate you, Ambassador Melvin Edja, Executive Director, Global Peace and Life Rescue Initiative. Once again, thank you. Thank you very much. Nice for having me.